This is the Super Beast, and it is the most cost-effective way to get a whole lot of lithium power. You get them from batteryhookup.com. They come configured as a 24-volt pack. You can disassemble the pack and reconfigure it for 12 volts. But the pack is a little bit ugly. Plus, I ran into a big problem when I tried to use the Super Beast. My power supply is not big enough to charge it. I've been using this one right here. It's a PowerMax PM4. It's supposed to be a 100 amp multi-stage smart charger and continuous power supply. But when you dig into the manual, it tells you not to exceed 80% capacity. So it's really only good for 80 amps. And as you can see, the Super Beast was drawing more than that. It works fine for a day or two. And then <laughs> the power supply went into protect every time I plugged it in. So I'm gonna to try to harvest the cells and build a smaller battery. That's an easy problem to fix. All you've gotta do is take it apart. And when you do that, this is the cheapest way to buy headway lithium cells. Well, hopefully it's an easy fix. Let's find out. The first step is to remove all of the secondary wiring. In this case, that just means unhooking a balancer. You will get a detailed description of how to connect a balancer in a few minutes. And if you're harvesting cells from a standard out of the box Super Beast, keep watching. We will cover that as well. Once you have the balancer unhooked, grab a 10 millimeter socket and start unscrewing all the bolts. That way you can remove the bus bars. Make sure you save the bolts. More on that later. The easiest way to get the bus bars off after you pull out the bolts is to just tip the battery upside down. On this side here, you can see where I labeled the positive and negative side of the battery when I reconfigured it. I also included a jumper to connect those two positives. And we can do a little bit of math. These are eight amp hour cells. And in this setup, there are 12 cells connected into a parallel group. Eight times 12 is 96. That's where you get 96 amp hours. To get all those cells out of the case, there are four long bolts that hold everything together. On one end, you'll find a T-nut. You'll wanna hold down that T-nut with your finger while you unscrew the bolt. Now this next step right here is actually the hardest step. You've got to slip these cell holders here in the middle off of the cells. And here's what ends up happening. The Super Beast ships with heat sensors that are stuck onto some of the cells. When you pull off those sensors, it tends to leave behind some of the adhesive. And these plastic parts will hang on that adhesive when you're trying to get them off. When you do eventually get the cells out, they are screwed together in the middle. This is done to wire them all in series. The good news, they're not screwed together very tight. You can just unscrew them with your hands. Watch out for those thin little bus bars in between the cells. They can be sharp. At this stage, you wanna take your time and be careful. You don't wanna accidentally short any of these things out and they will roll off of your workbench. So what you wanna do is grab a plastic tub and neatly stack your cells in that tub. Now these Super Beast modules are used. I don't know exactly what they were used for, but they are gonna be filthy. I found that I was able to knock the dust off with something as simple as a Swiffer. Earlier, I mentioned those temperature sensors. When you pull those off, there's a good chance you're gonna remove some of the outer insulation, that red stuff on the outside of these cells. So you wanna apply electrical tape to any exposed metal. If you were just buying used headway cells in bulk, instead of buying a Super Beast, you would probably want to top balance them before you move on to the next step. But this Super Beast module should already be balanced. But at the very least, you should take a few minutes to check the cell voltage. Each eight amp hour cell is supposed to rest at 13.2 volts. I went ahead and took the time to type everything into a spreadsheet. Virtually all of them were resting above 3.2 volts. I went ahead and calculated the mean and standard deviation because that's just kind of how my brain 
works. Most of the cell voltages were within one standard deviation, which makes sense because that's kind of how standard deviations are supposed to work. And since I'm dropping down to 64 amp hours, I don't need groups of 12, I need groups of eight. So I'm only gonna use the cells that were within two standard deviations. And I'm also gonna go ahead and set aside any cells that had dents in them or any cells that I had to put some tape on. There's nothing wrong with the cells that I'm not using. I just needed a way to decide which ones to use and which ones to set aside for a future project. I got these bus bars right here from JAG35. I'll leave you a link to them down below. And if you want to pick up a set of these, you can use the coupon code DIY audio for 10% off. Now these are the extra thick 1000 amp hour bus bars, and it's a 64 amp hour set. If you want to use all of your super B cells, Jack 35 does have a 96 amp hour set, plus a ton of other cool battery options for you. So hit the link down in the description and check them out. Assembly is straightforward. Just match the positive on the cells to the positive on the bus bar and the negative on the cell to the negative on the bus bar. You just gotta take your time and pay attention and make sure you check your work as you go. Here's a tip, the negative side has this black ring and the positive side's all shiny metal. You should hand tighten everything and then come back later with a socket to make sure you have a good connection. If you're using power tools, set the clutch to its lowest setting. You don't wanna over tighten and strip out the threads in the cells. So here I've got the entire thing assembled and I ran into a problem when I was assembling the pack. These screws here are the ones that came with the Super Beast. And the Super Beast came with some threaded hardware so you could connect things together in series like this. So when I put these on the JAG35 bus bars, I ran out of screws and I had to order some more. I wasn't sure what kind I needed. And I ended up getting these here with the, uh, with the Allen head. So they don't match. The other thing, on the ends, these pieces are triple thick. So the entire thing is double thick. They took two of the 500 amp bus bars and just stacked them to get the thousand amps. And then on the ends, added another piece. So it's triple thick on the end. So with this part being extra thick, you need the screws to be longer to fit lugs on. So if you're repurposing a Super Beast, go ahead and order some longer screws. The challenge is finding screws that won't bottom out into the batteries. What I've ordered seems to work. I'll give you a link to what I use down in the video description. When I ordered these screws, I went ahead and ordered a pack of connectors so I'd have some ring connectors to connect the balancer. And I'm gonna show you how the balancer is connected right now. Right here on the balancer, it's hard to see, but the very first one at the top says B negative, that's the black wire. And then it's B1 plus the green wire, B2 plus the yellow wire, B3 plus, and then B4 plus. The way you want to think about it, this set of eight cells in parallel is battery one. The black wire goes with battery one on the balancer and goes here. Battery one positive goes here. First set of eight is battery one, second set of eight is battery two. So the green wire goes here on the positive. This yellow wire is then labeled battery two plus. Well, this is battery two here. So the yellow goes on these banks right here. The white wire is labeled battery three plus. This is battery three. The third set in series goes on the positive side here. Then finally, the red wire goes on the positive side. So now I gotta wire all that up. Hang tight. And right about here is where I realized that I got the green and the yellow wire swap. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that off camera. You can see here that while the camera was off, I used some scrap PVC sheet to make a very basic battery box. I screwed that box down to the table and hopefully this little box will keep me from accidentally knocking the battery off the table. I recommend that you go ahead and cover most of those screws with some electrical tape to minimize the chance of something falling on the battery and shorting out across those screws. Now it's time to hook the battery up to the power supply. I have a tip for you. 
Make your connections in the middle, not on the end. If you just make your connections on those corners, those cells on the corners are gonna have some extra stress put on them and you don't wanna do that. And hey, the final result looks a lot nicer than that big, ugly super beast, but it's now time for the moment of truth. Will the power supply go in to protect? Hey, it, it seems to work with the power supply on where holding steady at 14.4 volts. Hopefully this battery will be beefy enough to test a few amplifiers. I'm saving up for some bigger power supplies than another super beast so that I can harvest some more cells and test some really big amplifiers. When I initially plugged in that power supply, it started off by drawing about 50 amps of current, so nowhere near that 80 amp maximum. Then it leveled off to about 30 amps. And honestly, a 30 amp draw seemed like a lot just to maintain a battery. I'm not sure what to make of that. To see if something's going wrong, I'm gonna grab this thermal camera here and plug it into my phone and see if I can find any hot spots. The first thing that you will notice is that the positive bus is about 2.3 degrees Fahrenheit, warmer than the rest of the battery. That could be due to any number of reasons. It might simply be due to the heat that that exposed metal is absorbing from that uninsulated wall right behind it. That wall is getting direct sunlight. That's on the west side of the garage. This was filmed around sundown. Over on the east side of the garage, I've got a thermometer. It's 85 degrees there. Over on the west, that wall is 109 degrees. After running the power supply for a few minutes, I noticed that the wire looked like it was heating up. The fan on the power supply kicked on, and what you're seeing there is the hot air being blown out of the power supply and blown across the, the wires. So at first glance, this appears to be a success. Well, it appears to have worked, but it didn't. A couple of days later, I popped into the garage to get started on the next video, plug the power supply in, and the power light didn't come on. So once again, it's gone into protect mode. It looks like I've got to spend some money on a better power supply. This little Power Max just doesn't have the juice to charge up these lithium cells. To learn more about reconfiguring a Super Beast, click right here. Before I go, I wanna say thank you to all of my patrons, including $25 patrons, Bo, Dylan, Fargo, JD America, David, and Baba. I'm Justin, this is the DIY Audio Guy YouTube channel and I will see you on the next adventure.